In other areas, the earth is turned over for sampling. Constant radio communication with the control center provides up-to-the-minute information on the radiological situation and the data for charting the decay of radiation around zero point. Through intelligent use of radiation detection equipment, some of the personnel are aware that they have now been exposed to radiation for the maximum period of time consistent with safety, and as they return from the contaminated area, they are again monitored as an additional safety check. They turn in their equipment, film badges, dosimeters for a final check. All contaminated clothing is discarded and prepared for disposal. More men return for inspection and turn in film badges. Here, the careful process of checking and recording the records of each man is continued. After initial paperwork is completed, film is delivered to the laboratory, developed, and delivered for densitometer analysis to determine the amount of radiation to which the film badge and its wearer have been exposed. Again, the individual records are examined, and each man's history of exposure to radiation is carefully recorded. Meanwhile, samples continue to flow into the laboratory. The long-range scientific plan and research in the field of radiation and radiological safety is now beginning to supply positive answers. Here an impactor slide is inspected for particle size analysis. Back on the island, the surveys continue. Even blackened and burned tree stumps are inspected for hidden traces of radiation danger. Vegetation and flowers at remote sites from zero point show evidence of scorching and must be checked for induced radiation. Flies and other insects here appear to have survived without ill effect. In some areas, the feathers of dark-colored birds were singed. These birds were unable to fly. The lighter-colored birds flew away without injury. Even on any, any island, far removed from zero point, the area must be monitored as film recovery teams approach a photo tower. On any Weetok Island, scientists and drone plane maintenance personnel prepare for the return of the pilotless aircraft. Their mission complete, the drones return with their samples. Having repeatedly flown through the atomic cloud, these planes must be approached and handled with extreme caution. Sample filters must be removed immediately. Although unanticipated, this operation involved the highest radiation levels to which any personnel were exposed. After the samples have been removed, the decontamination of the aircraft is supervised by RADSAFE. When individual tolerance limits of radiation exposure have been reached, this means replacement and off to the personnel decontamination center. Here, the energetic application of plain GI soap and plenty of water is administered under the supervision of the ever-present monitor. The last group of monitors leave X-ray Island, their work here completed. Back to the Bairoco comes the last helicopter. All areas have been checked. Lagoon waters have been cleared. The post-detonation phase for X-ray has been accomplished. So as preparation for Y and Z blasts are finished, there is born a new confidence and assurance inspired by the knowledge that radiation, when handled intelligently, can be handled safely. <laughs>